We're back. We're back. In a cuter, backgrounded area. And I need to look at here and not here. It's uh, it's it's my room, our room, my house this time. So yeah, she just got out of work. It's closer for her, you know. It just I hope I'm not sense. dirty. No, I think you're fine. Am I good? I think you're fine. I have some of Julie's dogs drool on me, but that's okay. That's, I mean, I, I have hair and stuff, so that's going to happen. But anyway, yeah, she's having cafecito. I'm having some wine, so we are <laughs> two different levels right now. Mm -hmm. Yvette trying to stay alive. Julie anyway. still trying to stay alive. Okay. Yeah. So today we decided that we're going to go ahead and talk about breast cancer because yes. this episode comes out right in the beginning of October. So we're like, you know what? It's breast cancer awareness. Let's, you know, free the tatas. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, love I that know. Slogan. And it's not the, like the little, um, the bands that say that, like I love boobs or something yeah. like that. Like, it's really, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So we're going to, don't worry. It's not going to be like a TED talk or anything like that. We're going to just bring it up to you know yeah give you guys that yeah this that episode is more for awareness i know it's funny medicine by no means is breast cancer funny no not yeah. at all it's funny because we're funny yeah <laughs> that's why it's funny medicine because we're funny yeah but we're doing it more to bring awareness to the episode and stuff like that and not, not exactly. to the episode i can't talk right now i'm no, out of work i mean you just got out of work awareness and... to breast cancer for breast cancer awareness month exactly exactly so that's what we're gonna do and you know if you're a female and you have boobies even if you're a man man yeah you have... men get breast cancer exactly you gotta you gotta get that stuff checked out you gotta do the self exams and yes and all that stuff talk yes. to a doctor if you do feel something that's not kosher that that's not the usual so yes. yeah all right so What's breast cancer? So it's a type of cancer, right? So it is a type of cancer. There's different types of breast cancer within that category. Um, but usually it is cancer of the breast tissue. And then depending on where the cancer is in the specific location of the tissue, how it comes up, different hormones, different, different things mm -hmm. can cause um, breast cancer. And uh, but yeah, it's basically cancer in the breast tissue and can potentially be metastatic, which means spread. It spreads. Okay. So yeah. it spreads outside of the breast outside to like breast. another organ exactly. around or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So does there have to, anything to do with the milk, like breast milk or anything like that? Mm -hmm. For instance, can it start like in the milk ducts or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. There's so in breast so tissue. Because we were talking about breastfeeding not too long ago and yes. then now we're bringing this up. So it's like, kind of like, I don't know. It kind of Yeah. So breast feeding has been shown to lower the incidence okay. of breast cancer. Different things lower the incidence of breast cancer. Pregnancy is one of them. It's pretty much a lot of the breast cancers are hormonal, like some hormones kind of drive the breast cancer. Right. So that's why they do a lot of that testing when you're initially diagnosed to see if there's any markers that can, that can tell us a little bit more information. But yeah, so breastfeeding, it doesn't lead to breast cancer by any means. Right. You can even have some milk ducts that can become a little bit cystic and stuff like oh. that. That doesn't lead you to a greater risk or pose you to a greater risk of breast cancer. But yeah, it can actually be protective. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons why we promote breastfeeding as well because of the lower risk and the incidence of breast cancer in gotcha. individuals that breastfeed. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So then we did briefly talk about like, if it's metastatic, what is it? And that's that the cells grow and they multiply uncontrollably. So that's pretty much the case for any cancer. That's what the definition is. Like. Yeah. Unfortunately, breast cancer will start localized and then those cells start dividing and divide uncontrollably. And then everywhere in our body, we have lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So if it gets outside to the lymph nodes, then that's how it's spread. So that's yeah. how it can become metastatic. So that's how it spreads. Okay. Yeah. So because the body has like its own kind of like checks and balances, right? In where like it sees something that's abnormal. And then for example, one of these cells typically will take care of it, but then that's how cancer happens. Like it won't, it passes that like it goes, yeah. you know. So our cells are very smart and this is like going down to a cellular level, which it's been a long time, but the best way that I can explain it is that our cells have a self regulatory cycle. Mm -hmm. And if our cells see some sort of damage or mutation or something like that, then what's going to happen is that our self actually goes into auto like suicide yeah. and it kills itself, gotcha. which is good. And we have, that's what stops cancer. Exactly. Yeah. That's what stops it. However, these are our own 
like cells yeah. that are have this mutation. So mm -hmm. some it's not like whenever we have a bad cell, our bodies all oh, know exit. Yeah. You know, that's why we get sick and that's why we we right. develop cancers. So sometimes it is good at taking care of those things and sometimes it can get a little bit out of control. It kind of like literally replicates uncontrollably to the point where it produces a cancer. And then that's why when we give chemotherapy, chemotherapy takes care of the bad cells, but the good cells. Right. It just does so, like a whole blanket like on everything because I mean, it could be anything. Yeah. You know? Now we've advanced so much in medicine, which is truly incredible what we've been able to do. But there's a lot of targeted therapy now. Mm. So they will go, they'll do this hormone testing, they'll do genetic testing. So then they basically have these specific markers that will be on this type of cancer. Yeah. And then we have targeted therapy for Amazing. that specific tick cancer. Amazing. So yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. The stuff that we've been able to advance with cancers in general. Right. And it along with breast cancer as well. Okay. I think the screening for breast cancer has also been like a big movement. I yeah. think we didn't do it enough years ago yeah and now we have the technology to do it even more the research showing that it's important yes too, like i think you know no, you yeah, guys are definitely. really putting a lot of research and a lot of time into it so yeah the, the research into cancer is pretty incredible but uh, yeah the then there's cancer awareness for different types of cancers but breast cancer is a really big one mm -hmm. and uh, we gotta get behind it yeah 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 we're getting better but we got to keep on it mostly with the preventative medicines like you were saying like yes. the mammograms and everything that we're going to touch upon now yeah so yeah so let's touch up on that because i have a little story and it's kind of crazy but yeah anyways Oof. okay so symptoms and diagnoses so the biggest symptom or the biggest thing that we watch out for with breast cancer is a lump in the breast so that's why we push a lot for women to do self exams yeah. and it should be routine. Yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. And it's do quick. It in the shower, you do it in the shower, you routine, do it anywhere. Whatever, you can yeah. literally be pooping yeah. on the toilet yeah. and do a self like exam. Pain in the breast yeah. too is another one. If you see anything with your breast, like dimples, different. Uh, wrinkly in some point, your nipple starts to look different in color Nipple and discharge. change dis discharge yeah. anything like that of course if, if you're not breastfeeding mm -hmm. like just us right now that we're not breastfeeding or we're whatever all of a sudden yeah. tomorrow morning i wake up with some discharge red flag yeah you exactly know? like yeah. it's not rocket science if you see anything abnormal with your breast yeah then go and get it checked out yeah because the sooner you get diagnosed the better yeah. it is mm -hmm. and the the basically the less of a chance you give it to metastasize. Mm -hmm. So yes, unfortunately, sometimes you don't feel it. And then by the time that you feel it, it's a little bit more advanced. Yeah. And that's an unfortunate situation, but that doesn't happen to everyone. What I try to always let my patients know is that what you're doing with the self exams as well is you're pretty much learning your own breasts. Yeah. So you know yep. what's normal compared to abnormal. If you've been doing your self, ex like self breast exams or basically like checking yourself every single month for years, you're going to know when you're there's know something different more than you know? most people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've been doing it. You know what it feels like, what a difference feels like. And yes, things fluctuate. You can have you know, cysts in the breast, you can have maybe hormonal changes that makes it a little bit more like lumpier mm -hmm. or something like that. But you know that difference. Exactly. And it triggers you to be like, no, I need to go to the doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fear, fear is a huge thing too. I'm sure. Unfortunately, there's a lot of us out there that we go into like a denial phase. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's scary. Of it course, is. it's scary. I can't. Im I I cannot imagine that when I have my adolescents come in and they feel something weird, something off. I too, like everyone, gets nervous around cancer. No one wants cancer. Of course. But you should always do your exams on yourself. And actually, there was there's actually been talks about stopping recommending the self exams. Oh, okay. Yes. That, I don't think that's been an official recommendation. I could be wrong. I, I'm going to still continue to recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe they recommend that for people that are prone to like high anxiety. Yeah, like, obviously. You know, that yeah. then they become hypochondriac about it. Yeah. Maybe if, you, if you're teetering around that, but like if you're just doing that as a normal everyday, you know, 
it's just part of your routine like yep. while you shower i know a lot of people that i, I bring up the shower because that's like at least me and other people that i know they're like oh yeah when i shower i just you mm -hmm. know everything's kosher okay cool if you're like just in that routine then i think it's fine but yep. maybe when it's i don't know they get scared because they encounter oh yeah that's our that's my dog say hi that yeah that's that's him if you've heard noises oh, no, that's, a pen. that's not yours if you've yeah great so if you've heard noises and me getting up and whatever it's because of this brat right here yeah anyway, um yeah but but yeah it actually there's a lot of physicians that yeah. recommend against it because of the high anxiety and they come that's back it, yeah. and then it maybe leads to unnecessary testing I'm always going to recommend an exam mm -hmm. always because it doesn't mean that every time that someone comes in as a doctor, we also what you do like the way my bun tastes <laughs> for, for people that are only listening in audio little thing here. It's my my pup. He really wants attention. He's in here now because he couldn't be outside alone. And so he's like literally right behind us on the <laughs> camera. But anyway, continue. Sorry. But anyways, I'm always going to recommend it. And as a doctor, you also need to have that open conversation with your patients and say, I prefer that you come to me with any doubts. Yeah. yeah. And I'm never going to be like, stop, stop touching because I, they're I anxious. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Never. I, I, I the last that, thing I yeah. want is for someone to come to me. Exactly. And say, you told me not to do it. And then think it. No, nope. Yeah. No, no I. Again, I'd rather I'd rather you come to me. I, I definitely am a proponent for self examinations because yeah. I mean, again, you had said it. You're the person that knows yourself the most. You've been you live with your breasts. They're part mm -hmm. of your body. Like you know if something's off, something's yeah. different, something's like not supposed to be there. It hasn't been there it wasn't there like last week or whatever. So yeah. it just makes sense. Um yeah. but yeah, so if you experience any of those symptoms, like please, please seek medical attention. Like yeah. Go talk to you. Who do you think? Like your OB guy? Go to your primary care physician. I mean, why not? We you, literally go to the urgent care for the stupid shit. I know. So why are you not going to go for something that for can... something that can be that serious? Yeah, exactly. You know? So, yeah. Pre and we're not prevent, trying, please, prevent, for prevent. the love of God, no, no, like, no, we're no. not trying to instill anxiety in anyone no. here. It... We're just saying if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, we recommend or yeah, we recommend you just go ahead and follow up. So your primary care physician should be trained to do this, okay? Right. We are trained in medical school and during residency to do these breast exams, to do the labs, to do the ultrasounds, to do other sorts of imaging to make sure that you don't, um, that this is not a breast cancer situation. Right. So there are people, I'm not going to say that every primary care doctor is made equally there are physicians that will refer out to a specialist however i think that that is a disservice okay because sometimes it takes a really long time to get to these specialists and that's just wasting time right okay so go to your pcp they will do hopefully the initial workup while we wait to see a specialist mm -hmm. and that could be a breast surgeon that could be maybe an ob guy right because I know that like when I go to, let's say, my annual, when mm -hmm. I get my pap and, and yeah. all that stuff, which I know that the recommendations have changed also for the pap, yes. but that's a whole different tangent. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know that she routinely, at least, does like a lump check, like just yes. hand, you yeah. know, just over, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Which but, I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. just see your OB. You know, you're going to see her anyways. Yeah. Or him, whoever it is. Yeah. Like, and gonna... even um, for those of you that are maybe still in college or something, you know, your health, your student health has practitioners and stuff like that that will also do that. So yeah. Yeah. go and get checked. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you have, you know, you just do it. So how do we diagnose it now that like, let's say there is something suspicious, you went to the doctor, there's something there that's not kosher, like, yeah, so if there's a high um, suspicion for a breast cancer, then usually we do blood work. And then we also do imaging. And then the imaging will sometimes depend on your age, just because the density. So I'm just going to say the density. I think that's mm -hmm. like the best word to explain it. But the density in your breast mm -hmm. is different for every age group. So depending on your age group mm -hmm. or the exam that we do, we might have you do an ultrasound or we might have you do a mammogram, MRI, 
Yeah. Those type of things. Okay. So typically mammograms, they're highly recommended after 40. Yes. So after 40, every other year, you should be getting a mammogram. Okay. You can have it younger. So just because you're not 40 doesn't mean that we're not going to do a mammogram mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. So that's a, I think that's a very common misconception. But after the age of 40, that is where the incidence tends to be higher in breast cancer, which is crazy to me because I'm 34 and I can't believe that it's yeah so am I yeah that we're approaching that <laughs> yeah, age we're approaching of like that age uh, we're, it's like this recommendation whatever that's like crazy to me my yeah. mind but <laughs> moving on yeah. but yes and then before that it is optional so I don't know why it's like after the age of 40 mm -hmm. yes I understand medicine okay got it all right I'm like I can see already like a thousand people screaming at me for saying that sentence but I just think that early detection or routine screening yeah. earlier, I think there's more research that needs to be done in order for these recommendations to be pushed to be a little bit earlier, maybe as young as 35. Right. Because we see a ton of breast cancer. I agree. I'm and it's the 20s 25. and early 30s. So, yeah. yes, I understand. The majority is after the age of 40. I understand. I, th I think it should be routinely or at least offered right you know right but then you get to the whole entire insurance is it gonna pay for it is it not and you know i'm not kim kardashian getting a whole entire full body scan go see our patreon so, episode yeah go see our patreon episode on that but basically i one of uh my close friends works for a company that part of their employee wellness mm -hmm. was for was to bring in a mammogram machine okay. okay and women had the option to go ahead and get screened That's which is phenomenal phenomenal like i we see all these like wellness things and i think wellness has been a huge push in the yeah. last few years for yeah. every place but it's usually like oh like cocktail hour here yeah, or, or maybe like a little gift card to i don't know chick-fil-a i don't know something like that yeah, yeah and then yeah. i was like wow like that is genius like bring in That's a mammogram Yes, because, yeah. or like maybe like they say like, oh, well, you have one dedicated day to go to the doctor. Right. So they give you that day off, but it's a paid day off. Right, right, Whatever. Right. Point is, is that they brought in a mammogram machine mm -hmm. and this person was not the age uh, where you usually get routine screening. They did the mammogram and I mean, unfortunately, she, they found breast cancer. Oh my God. Yes. Thank goodness for that. Isn't that crazy? So wow. they found wow, breast wow, cancer wow. and she she didn't have a lump. She didn't have anything. She yeah. But they were able to do a lumpectomy and like. And that's it. And, and like, radi I think she got like some radiation and that's it. That's that's incredible. And that's that shows you the power of yeah. preventative medicine. So it's like unfortunately, but fortunately. Yeah. It's wow. like a, yeah. Incredible incredible yeah I, that's actual wellness yeah that is wellness. <laughs> that, that, that is, is wellness. wellness absolutely but i just thought it was so cool you yeah. know like for free incredible i i love that i love that idea whoever came up with that whoever idea, came up with like, that is phenomenal. deserves a, a a golden well he he or she whoever it is that came up with that idea saved her life yep it literally could have potentially yep potentially her. like yep. depending you never on the know. stage yeah, you, you never know you never yeah know. exactly i don't know the specifics of about of course not you never know and thank that... god and thank god you don't know but you don't want to know how yeah, far exactly. along it would have gone by the time that sh a lump would have been felt or mm -hmm. something anything you know incredible incredible but yeah. anyway I'm not saying a mammogram is the most comfortable thing either. Oh, it's not. Yeah. I I've mean, heard. <laughs> I have not had a mammogram Me done either, before, but I've seen them and they squish your titties into a pancake. I didn't even know really that they tight. could be that flat. <laughs> yeah. It's so, I'm like, oh. If you guys are on Patreon, you see like this, yeah, the, the video. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so what we said, mammograms, MRIs, Ultrasound, um, ultrasound, biopsy, biopsy right? Like... So if we do find something, they will take a biopsy and they'll even do tests to see if the lymph nodes around the breast oh. are also also have the cancer cells. Mm -hmm. So that'll give us a little bit of more information on potential staging because mm, yeah. um, you definitely want to stage every type of cancer to see where you're at. And it kind of like curtails like what type of surgery then you need. Oh, what type but... of surgery, what type of treatment, yeah. how aggressive they need to be. Okay. Um, staging is super, super important. You, yeah. you really, you pretty much can't proceed like to treatments or any, you can, but you, you need to stage where yeah. you are. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then treatment options. 
we just said surgery. Then yeah. there's also, like you had mentioned briefly before, radiation and chemo. Yes. Okay. Um, and then chemotherapy, as you had said with radiation as well earlier, that it just, it's pretty much all of the cells. It, it's not, at least right now, when it mm -hmm. comes to radiation and chemotherapy, traditional, it's just yeah. like all of it. Hence why you get all those horrible side effects that you see, like the hair loss is a big, is a big one, yeah. unfortunately, it's, it's particularly like sensitive for women for obvious reasons yeah. and then you which have like, all power to females now like rocking the no hair look amazing yeah and, and honestly like, wigs they've come yeah a long so way so far <laughs> yeah. a long way they're beautiful they're beautiful now, they're beautiful now. Like, you can't even tell. you cannot tell yeah yeah and i'm then, that, listen have you ever been to like a a breast cancer? I've or... walked by one in the Baptist. So yeah. Baptist down here in South Florida, by the way, Baptist is a big like hospital um, chain, per, you know, per se. Yeah. And and in their cancer like building. Yeah, their new one. In their new yeah, then they have a store that's with wigs, mm. and it's it's beautiful and it's a great idea. I'm glad that they did it. You yeah. Know? So I've I walked by it, it, but I haven't gotten. Well, there's yet. a ton of people like at walks and yeah, like breast cancer events that they shave their head. Mm -hmm. if you like don't they like literally separate their hairs and they're like for every so much I, i'll shave off a lock of hair wow yeah. wow 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 but yeah so yeah radiation and chemotherapy they do have like nasty horrible side effects but it is definitely necessary mm -hmm. especially depending on the type of staging that you are and yeah. how far it's metastasized or whatnot and that's why you get these horrible symptoms and these side effects because you go it, it just it's a global like it's not only targeted to that cancer cell but it's it's pretty much all your cells yeah it's obliterating and pretty much all of them that's why you yeah. also have the weight loss and so many things yeah. like there's just so many things then there's also hormonal therapy yeah. to block the effects of the hormones if it is a breast cancer that is triggered and caused by the yeah a lot hormones. of our chemotherapy are like hormone like yeah. hormone targeted therapies so so yeah though it's pretty much the, the treatment options other than surgery of course and then so the common side effects of it like we were talking about you know you got the fatigue the nausea the vomiting which is one of the i think pretty much almost everybody has a nausea yeah vomiting, i mean you know? these these chemotherapies are very intense yeah. and they're given in cycles yeah so you know like a cycle could be like every day yeah. a cycle can be like monday wednesday friday it just depends these cycles are like really tough and you take the first one and you're like okay and then you take the second one and you're like mm, starting to feel it and then by the next day you're like down but yeah. it's crazy how people like they they have this resilience oh absolutely in them and it's the incredible motivation. what humans can do yeah and what humans can take yep so yep. with the motivation and the to determination them. to push yeah. through so yeah yeah that's it's important like the mental the mental game is a big component into it's huge into all of it and i think well. our our teams our medical teams and by teams i mean everyone like yeah. the physician the nurses taking care everyone. of them everyone the social workers everyone that the families the patient everyone working together and like really rooting for our patients mm -hmm. is what what allows them to be pushed further absolutely you know? absolutely mm -hmm. i've heard stories because i'm sure like I mean, breast cancer is unfortunately very common to the point that like I have friends and even family members that have had breast cancer or unfortunately have passed away from it or whatnot. And you hear the stories of, yeah, when I was getting my treatment, mm -hmm. such and such nurse or such and such aid, all this bunch of stuff, like they were so cooperative. They were so yeah. helpful. They were there for me. They talked they to me. They remember everything. Know, everything. It's a big impact. Everything. It's huge because you're in such a vulnerable position and in such a vulnerable stage in your life right very there. scary it's mm -hmm. so you're scared you're vulnerable you're just everything your whole thought of what your future might be is crumbling your life can change from one second to the next and then you have just somebody being kind to you mm -hmm. at that moment that you're that fragile mm -hmm. it means the world it really does so survivorship so it all depends pretty much on your staging, right? Yeah. Oh, it depends. Everyone is yeah. different. And, and everybody. Everybody, yeah. everyone, every cancer, like everyone it is There's a lot very to it. different. Yeah. yeah. So one person can be a very different journey mm -hmm. from another person. So it's very personal to that person, which I think now medicine is able to be more personalized. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, survivorship is it depends on the cancer. It depends on how much it's progressed. Yeah. It depends how you respond to initial treatments. It depends if you're on a research study, if you're not. Like there's so many factors that go into that. But if right. there's one thing that I I I speak for a lot of people, yep, is that everyone is on the same boat for survivorship. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's important for everyone, you know? Yeah. So just to close off the episode, I'm going to go ahead and, of course, source everything, all the images that I'll be posting in our socials in regard to breast cancer. I have, I found some, I mean, there's unlimited amount of resources online about breast cancer. The, yeah. There's incredible organizations out there. Yeah. Everybody's done a great, great job at it. Yeah. So I'll be posting those photos with those sources as well. And um, like from the National Breast Cancer Foundation, Inc., they stated this year, 2023, 2,800 men. Okay, so this is not only women, okay? Mm -hmm. 2,800 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States and approximately 530 will die. So just because you're a male, yeah. you're a man, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't be checking yourself for this. You shouldn't be, you know, concerned about it. You, sh you equally should yes. male, be checking men yourself. Men have breast tissue. Yeah. It's there. It's there. So you got to check. And then one in eight women in the United States will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. So that's why it's important. Check, check, check. check. Stay on top of yourself. Anything that's weird, don't just put it to the side. I don't have time. I don't have... It's more important. Yeah. <laughs> You're definitely not going to have the time later, yeah. you know? So have... Make the time for yourself. Make yeah. the time for your health. And one thing that we didn't mention here, but family history... Big you, time. Is, yeah. is huge. So... Yeah. If you have a family history of breast cancer or anyone with uterine cancer or anything like that, go and get checked. Ask for testing. BRCA testing is huge. Yes. Um, that's basically one of the mutations. Just one, okay? But if you go and get tested, they usually test for other types of things that could be familial as well. And we didn't do this. And maybe it's something that we can do for the month of October, like maybe like a mini episode mm -hmm. or something like that on preventative mastectomies yes which yes. is so like i'm We're so happy that celebrities doing it and stuff like that yes yeah. and it's something that was not done before and unfortunately there's actually some insurance companies that won't cover it of course so but it is like a huge thing now and i'm so happy that a lot of women are taking that step to having a double mastectomy and all of these things and now there's even plastic surgeons that will actually go and do reconstructive yeah. surgery for to help them out and all so it's just something that's like really beautiful and something that's advancing in medicine and things that we didn't think about before that we're now thinking and it's huge to like go get tested and make the decision to remove a part of your body that has been with you forever even yeah. if you don't know you're gonna get breast cancer but it can save your life potentially is a huge step so that's something that we didn't really talk about because we didn't have enough time today to talk about it but maybe something that we can do like a little mini episode maybe you guys can tell us if you want to hear more about it of course and this is breast cancer is such a massive massive topic you yeah, know it is. that we wanted to of course the whole point of like our podcast is that we want to we want to have medicine be lighthearted enough for it to be approachable we don't want it to become like this ted talk type of situation yeah, exactly. or whatnot you know we wanted to give you guys the information of how important it is to have you guys like be on top of your own bodies yeah go to the doctor if you feel something weird take the freaking half day off to go see the doctor or whatever yeah. it is it's important you know yeah. so we but... call in sick for a hangover you can call in sick for a checkup for a checkup and better safe than sorry especially when it comes to this type of diagnosis so uh, we wanted to since it's breast cancer awareness month we wanted to bring awareness to it and a lot of you all that are listeners you may or you're female and you're even male and look at what i just talked about right now it's a big thing for for men too which is something that men just don't talk about because yeah. breast cancer is so related to female and yeah. it's such a woman it's i mean it's even pink you yeah. know and everything know. And pink is very feminine and it's at least culturally and uh, his historically yeah. whatever it is pink has always been associated with girls <laughs> less sorry so that's why in like it's very tabooish for men to talk about but you still need to check it out men you're in the shower give yourself a pat for a minute yeah <laughs> you know like I, I, you just don't think that you're completely immune to it because yeah. unfortunately none of us are you know so no, no one 
We wanted to bring awareness to it and we'll see you guys for the next episodes. Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash funny medicine podcast. Thank you all for the support on Patreon yes. and on the tip jar. We really, really, really appreciate it. We're there on Patreon is where we talk about the more salacious more juicy <laughs> topics i love that word <laughs> salacious we talk more um you know we let ourselves slide a little bit more because there's that paywall you know yeah. so it's it's fun and and then you also see these episodes that are audio episodes in the weekly put in video i mean there's just there's a lot more stuff in there you know of course you'll be helping us out and for the month of october we have yeah. planned that we want to keep it spooky so you know it's halloween coming up so the next couple of episodes for the month of October, both weekly and on Patreon, on both sides, we're going to be talking, of course, as we always do on Patreon, we talk about different things that we talk on the weekly. It's yeah. not the same stuff. They're not the same. Not thing. even yeah. remotely. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they're going to have in common is that it's all spooky stuff that we're going to be creepy. talking about. Creepy. Creepy shit. Creepy medical stuff from here on out for the month of October. So check us out for the next coming episodes on both places, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. See, I didn't do anything weird now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even look at what you did.